Welcome to Stampscaping 101. Apologize for the sound of this video. I'm using the internal mic as I forgot to charge up my battery for my external microphone. But I wanted to get a scene stamped out as I've been itching to do that. So instead of just doing a time-lapse video with no sound, non-narrated, I thought I would try the internal microphone on this camera again. All right, so I am stamping the babbling brook here. This is going to be a waterfall scene, and it's going to be based on um, one that I have stamped before, or similar, you know, in terms of uh, some of the main imagery that I'll be using. Babbling Brook and Brook Falls. I could use this one again, you know, somewhere around here, maybe a little bit higher. I wouldn't want to do it right side by side on the same level, because it would be too, I don't know, too similar. But if you do it kind of higher and then fill in with some additional rocks, it would be fine um, because of all the other imagery that we can add in here. But Brook Falls is kind of a nice addition. If you notice the um, compositionally, I like to have things kind of leading into kind of more of the center of a scene uh, most of the times. And this waterfall is kind of coming from this side. And this one right here, the main ones, it's kind of flowing like that. So it kind of gives you this kind of a visual lead-in type of a visual scenario. Having it like that, that being said, it doesn't have to be that way. You can use one or the other, you can use multiples, all kinds of possibilities here. All right, now, um, by the way, I, you saw me re-ink my pad. I thought it was re-inked already, if that was the one that I took to uh, the Arizona show convention, stamp convention, this past weekend. I really re-inked the black. And it's kind of arid out there anyway, of course, Arizona, in comparison to uh, California. But in the convention hall there, they have uh, all this uh, air conditioning blasting away in there. Anyways, I'm still a little bit dry in the center here. I should have stood up. But that little area where it's a little bit lighter, in the image it's darker, but I, I, don't know, I didn't press hard enough, but that area is going to be this kind of this um, foggy type of atmosphere in here anyways with that churning water. That's what's one of the things that's really fun to do and to apply in waterfall scenes, anywhere you, where you get kind of a water movement going. All right, now let's see here. I have this other area to fill in here, but on the scene that I did years ago, which was a quite of a, uh, a big kind of experiment with um, uh, white pigment ink and kind of fog and mist and whatnot. 
I use the, these trees right here. I use this one and uh, Tree Trunk Trio throughout the scene quite a bit. That one was done on an 8.5 by 11, but um, I'll do it here on this half page um, piece of paper of 8.5 by 5.5 inches. Okay. Now, one of the recent videos that I've done, it, really for beginners, um, but could be a little bit of a, you know, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, kind of a reminder to, um, you know, the experienced stamper, or it's just the notion of um, partial, or not not partial, but varied um, ink application impressions. Okay, all right. So, anyway, so I'm wiping off the bottom of this stamp. That's, this is just colored in black ink right here. Eh, maybe I'll put in a little bit of a different tone too, just for slight variation here. This is supposed to be, or it, hopefully it'll kind of read as a bit of a, kind of a fern, you know, a mossy kind of a forest right in here. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of green in here. All right. And, okay, going back to that um, varied, impression. What we'll do is I'll blot off some of the bottom or the side of the tree kind of facing whatever light source we're going to be using in here. So in this case I'll have kind of a centered light source. So on this side of the tree what I'm doing is I'm removing some of the ink. I'm being a little bit, I don't know, chicken about it though. I'm not removing too much of it because I don't want to have too much of it uh, removed. But sometimes when I do that I don't I really don't take off nearly enough and it it just seems like it stamps out just as dark as if I hadn't kind of blotted some of it off anyway. Okay, now this is a partial impression too. Okay, I didn't need to color up probably that whole portion, but I mean you can stamp this lower or higher depending on what portion of the tree you want. I'll just go for the uh, roughly the base of it here and see what that's going to look like. Okay, so we get something like that. And do you see that kind of varied tone in there? I don't know, I did remove off a little bit more. So that kind of gives me a little bit of head start in lighting. You know, it gives us a good indication of kind of light direction. All right, so I can go for another one of these in here, or we can stamp out, you know, the uh, tree trunk trio in the background, however way you want it to go. I think I'll go for another fairly large um, trunk in here. All right. I'll have to mask off this part, and I'll have to mask off some of that too. All right, so let's color it up the same way. I like to work, although they always teach you kind of how not to color your stamps um, when you're going for these multi-toned impressions like that. They usually tell you to start off light, and then you go in with a darker color, just so you don't pollute the lighter one. I go dark and then light, okay? Uh, and then I just kind of wipe that ink off. Okay, so I get that. This has some black on it, so I just kind of roll it like this. And you can see, I mean, it, you know, from that first um, wiping it off, it's fairly black, but you know, I don't know, whatever, eight things later, it's, you know, it's pretty clean. Let's see. Now it's clean. Okay. All right. Um, masking. Masking does not require a lot of effort with these stamps. Uh, I didn't blot it off, did I? Okay, let's see here. Let's go for this side this time, okay? Wipe it off. Yeah, pretty decent amount. Wipe off. Masking off easy techniques, right? If we've ever, you know, wiped, uh, I don't know, something off of our face, you know, we're eating uh, whatever, chicken. <laughs> you take a napkin and wipe your lips. It's the same type of thing as wiping off a piece of part of a stamp there. As far as a technique goes, it's a great easy technique for scenic lighting, okay? One aspect of it. And we'll also add in some scenic lighting, of course, with um, the tones that we run into it. So see this right here? See on the inside section 
of these two trees, we've created this kind of um, source of light or lighting direction. We do that all over the place in here. We can do another little one up here. Well, let's go ahead and do that. I think it'll frame off the scene fairly nicely. I don't need to do very much of it because there's, you know, just barely any portion of um, that area where we can see this tree. This tree is probably supposed to be something like a sequoia or something like that. Fairly large in terms of the uh, um, the trunks here. Oh, this one is, I think, olive green. I think I was using the yeah olive brown here. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Use whatever. Okay. Wiping off or dabbing off. Okay, we don't want to wipe all of it off. We just want to kind of direct our lighting with a little bit of a subtle change of a uh, value. Okay. Masking off that area again, about like so. Okay. I just go in for a little bit of piece in there. Try to have to overlap your impression a little bit, um, your first impressions, you know, just so you don't get these big spaces in between all of your different objects. But you can kind of see the direction this is going right here. I mean, this is a half page piece of paper. Like I said, I could have used one um, waterfall instead of, you know, two different ones. Let's go for a couple more trees up here. This is going to be, you know, this is another thing that I'm going to get to in my next Stamscapes University um, lesson. It's using partial imagery. So, you know, newbies to scenic stamping, they wouldn't really think about um, using a half inch, you know, down here of this tree in a scene. They're usually thinking about, here's two big images right here, you know. How is this going, going to fit into this scene? You know, because they're thinking about it filling up the entire space and using um, the imagery as a whole. Okay, but the scenic stampers, you know, we were using um, smaller portions of existing imagery all the time. Okay, I mean, not this one right here, I think I'm going to represent these ones are, you know, these trunks are smaller than these ones. I think what I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to try to represent, have this represent something farther off in the distance. Okay. It could just be a smaller tree too, but I'll, I'll have it farther off in the distance as well. I'll try to kill two birds with one stone. So I'll have it in there as a smaller scale image, but I'll wipe some of that off quite a bit. Okay. So that hopefully it stamps out quite a bit lighter in value and things that are lighter in value look farther off in the distance. Usually. Yeah, not 100% of the time, but quite often. Okay, I'm using about an inch of this one, and yeah, about down here. And remember, it's going, it, I think it should be a lighter version of it as well. Yeah, really quite light, okay? Something like that. Kind of debating on whether or not I want this one in here too. I think I do. Let's go really light on this one, okay? If we can. Let's go with the well, let's go with the black. Okay, I was thinking about going with the dark brown, but let's keep it kind of uniform and keep this um, fairly um, simple in terms of our concept here. Let me blot it off once. Let's go with some of this green. Oops, I keep grabbing this olive green, which is fine. But let's go with some of this olive brown here. All right, now let me blot it off again, okay? Just because I went over it freshly with those pads. Let's wipe off quite a bit of the bottom here and uh, I'll just kind of wipe off some of the perimeters of these trees. So, because these ones right here are kind of where the lighting is going to be coming from. So I'll try to create that lighting coming from kind of this, that general area. So I'm not wiping off one side of the tree or another. Okay. Blot off or mask off. Okay. Let's see. Can I get that in between those trees? I think I can. How these trees stamp out, it's not really too important to me because I think I'm going to be covering them up 
a lot with a lot of um, pigment ink as well, to just to kind of give this frosty kind of passageway into the scene. But that would be fine like that. So see that right there? Oh, I've really wiped it off. So see as far as scenic lighting goes, um, I haven't even touched any tones to this scene right here um, yet. But already there's kind of a sense of lighting going around, and lighting and distance and space, okay? Darker things are closer to us, lighter things are off in the distance right there. And we've also done some directional lighting. We've wiped off some of these trees facing that light, okay? All right, now you don't have to get too, you know, don't let this be kind of a, you know, really hard concept or anything like that. Um, watch my previous video too. Um, the, uh, not the tour around the Mesa Convention, but um, lighting and value. I, I have a few different videos based on that. Okay, now I will add in some additional um, imagery back in here and maybe down here too. Um, but I'm thinking about getting into some of the coloring first. As I say that, I'm kind of debating on whether or not to add a nice rock down here or something. Or rocks underneath the surface of the water. That would be fun too. Let me go grab a couple more images and uh, continue on. Alright, we have a couple different rocks here. Um, one of the things that I like to do in water scenes is, uh, not all the times, but um, I like to kind of give this, introduce this kind of sense of um, clarity and um, showing images below the water's surface is one way to do that. If we go to a really crystal clear little lake or pond or whatever, ocean, you know, you can see things, you know, the visibility um, from the surface down is there. So adding kind of some smaller elements like this um, is a, certainly a good way to do that. We're going to do a couple different things in here. Um, I'll show you how to do that. Um, I think I will go with black here. Let's do this. Let's treat this kind of the same way as we did some of these trees. Let's go with a, a black here. Maybe a muted black, okay? And let's go with a little bit of green in here. I'm thinking about making that blue area down, or the water, kind of a bluish green aqua tone. So I'm going to go with um, some images stamped in that general color scheme. Okay, something like this. Go for a couple different impressions. Okay, so this is why I'm doing it, inking blotting. A little bit of color, okay. Taking that, blotting it off again, okay. I mean, I don't know how many times you have to blot. It just depends on your pads or how we, uh, wet your uh, inks are. Something like that. I mean, it, that looks really strange, just as is, but uh, we'll get to the uh, you know, what that looks like in, in application here in a, you know, in a bit when we start coloring over it. So a lot of that's going to be covered over, but we'll be able to see little kind of ghost kind of impressions of those rocks down there. I don't want like complete visibility as if the, you know, the water is completely, you know, um, invisible, you know, it, it still has to be there, but we'll do it like that. All right. Now here's something that you probably wouldn't think about doing, and I didn't think about doing it either, but I was thinking um, this might be kind of interesting in here, is to utilize, let's go for a blue ink here. My, a lot of my other pads are put away still um, from this convention that I did this past week, and so I'm not using my mementos, but you can use any kind of brands here. I have a lot of my distress inks that I took to um, uh, the show this previous weekend and I was using it. I just haven't unpacked it all. So, all right, cloud cumulus. Okay. Blotting off. This is a fairly dark blue, but see that I blotted it off. It's going to stamp out a much drier version of it. Okay. Now I'm really taking off quite a bit of ink around it. Okay. 
and I'll have the billows facing up like that, okay? So let's take off a good amount, because I just kind of want the center portion in here, a suggestion of some of these clouds. And I'm going to put this in the water, and I think it gives it kind of a kind of a magical presence, you know, especially when we're talking about this churning water and whatnot, okay? Let's go for a second impression of it, too. I'll do that in the foreground here. Okay, so something like that. Eh, I don't need it over here. I'm going to put in some additional rocks. Just taking a look here. All right. A little bit of foreground, something to um, position imagery on if we want to, or it could just be some foreground for who knows, extra foliage or something like that. All right. Let me see. I do have a black ink, or I need some ink on this. I like to keep my pads kind of medium. Um, not really medium wet. I'll go medium wet sometimes if I if I'm going to a, a convention and I just don't want to be re-inking, you know, throughout the day. But sometimes it starts me off with a little bit too much ink when I'm, you know, starting off in the morning doing the demonstrations and whatnot. Okay, so this is boulders with lichen. Let's put this somewhere in the foreground. Okay, maybe I'll tilt it a little bit. So like that. Let's go for another impression of it. And let's see, why don't I overlap about like so? I'm just kind of using this little strip portion of it at the top here. Yeah, so we can get something like that. Now, see, I could put some trees or something like that, and it puts us on the other side of this body of water right here. So, as a viewer, I mean, it would be okay without it there, but it would kind of be like we're somewhat floating in space from a visual standpoint, and that would be fine too. I mean, you can be this kind of, uh, I don't know, all-seeing eye. This kind of grounds things a little bit and says that there's shoreline and that, you know, we're standing on something looking into it as a viewer. Okay. So, let's see. That black there should be drying up fairly quickly. All right, let's start toning this in. Let's keep it really easy and simple, et cetera, et cetera. Oh boy, I could use my Memento Blue. And let me see if I have my gray. I have a London fog that I didn't take to the show. It's so light in value. I, sometimes I leave these types of pads. Um, in the office, I don't take them to shows because it's just so light of a color, but when I have a little bit more time, like on this one right here, maybe I'll utilize that gray tone here. I'm just using a uh, paper towel. I love using sponges and all kinds of different applicators, but we'll just go with the paper towel right here for right now because not everyone has other types of tools. Okay, if you have it. Now don't say, oh, I don't have paper towels like that, so I can't do this scene, or can't do this technique, or something like that. You can. You can use all kinds of uh, different things uh, for this technique. Napkins, Kleenex, rags, whatever. Okay. All right, now here's the concept here. I'm going to keep things fairly light in here, or it'll be backlit, you know, so light will be coming through these openings. Maybe, it, you know, it's a little bit more over this way, being that I kind of wiped off some of this side of this tree trunk and wiped off this side, the inner sides of the tree trunk, so maybe the lighting will be coming from here in general. So, that being said, I'm laying down some colors on the sides of the tree opposite that light source. So on here, maybe I'll put you know, a little bit more of this tone on the left side of this tree. And the trees over on this side, I'll go put a little bit more on the right side. Oops, I got a little tone right there. I'll get some tone going in the background just so it's not completely bare though, okay? Something like this. 
I mean, this comes together pretty fast in your lighter area where the light's coming from. Keep it fairly light to the touch, okay? See, I'm not drawing like a hard line or something like that. I'm just kind of like you're wiping something, you know, you're applying a little bit of tone at a time. See down here in the water where those um, clouds are? I'm going to leave that fairly light. I like to really kind of emphasize um, the falling water and waterfall scenes, so I'll keep the wa water a little bit lighter. Sometimes people think, okay, water is blue, so they color all this in blue, and it kind of detracts from lighting and the reflective quality of um, water. Water tends to be, you know, it tends to be reflective of, you know, the things around it, unless it's like super dirty water or something like that, um, where it absorbs light, but uh, in this case, if you want it to be kind of this crystalline, you know, beautiful, clear water, then, you know, have it reflective. Don't put too much tone into it, okay? Leave it fairly light and tone the things around it, and it will make that area of water kind of stand out, like right here. See, if I tone that area around it like that, it makes that water stand out by contrast in there, so that really stands out now. Okay, I mean, it doesn't mean you can't put some tinge of some color in there, but maybe keep it a little bit lighter. If you want to put some blue in there, put a light blue, but then make the area around it darker so that light blue stands out as light. Or lighter. Okay, so this cloud right here, kind of want that to stand out a little bit, so maybe I'll leave some of the billows fairly light this ledge right here in the foreground. I'll tone it in like this. Let's see, by toning that in like that, those areas that are lighter seem lighter by contrast, okay? What they call this is checkerboarding, okay? So it's just, it's this oscillation of light and dark across your piece that you're working with. So you play contrasts against one another. If that's light, and you want it lighter, then you make the area around it darker, okay? You can be doing this markers, too. I mean, I could be coloring in this whole area with a, with a very light-toned marker, you know, alcohol markers, whatever. See these areas down here in the shadows? Or there's shadows in the design itself. Just go in there and just reiterate it some, okay? Make it even darker with some additional tone or color. All right, so this is just using one color so far, but I don't know, it's getting to be fairly rich in my color scheme, lighting scheme. There's just one color so far. I mean, the fun hasn't even begun. <laughs> okay, so that is that. Let's move into some blue tones, okay? Mm, I'm going to have to decide whether I want to go with this London Fog swab on here or switch out. I'm kind of leaning towards using that in conjunction with the Salvia Blue Marvy. Uh, summer Sky is great in the Marvy tones. Um, tumbled Glass, if you have Distressed. Some kind of, kind of cheer, you know, um, light blue tone, okay? All right, let's start adding this in there. Now, maybe this is going to have a lot of that London fog in here, so it's not going to be this pure blue that I'm utilizing right now straight out of the pad, because it'll have all those other colors, or the previous color, merge with it, okay? Kind of don't hurry it, you know, just kind of let it develop. If you don't see blue right away, don't worry about it. Don't, you know, kind of start scrubbing away and, you know, get marks all over the place. Just kind of let it develop. And the more you dip into this like this, the more it'll become predominantly blue. Okay, you can see this blue tinge down here in the water now. It's a little bit more over here that, you know, the cloud is stamped in blue, but now we can turn that to neutral gray. A little bit more of a cool temperature here. Developing my shadows, okay? Leave some of these areas light that where you've retained the light from the previous color, or if you didn't retain any, start developing it now. You can make other areas darker and leave the other areas light, even if it wasn't pure white. Okay, maybe pure white was too light. Okay, 
shadows at the base of the waterfall here. sure which one I'm I, I'm kind of leaning towards not using this light blue that's what it's called um, from Mari but uh, maybe I will use a little bit of it this pads really disintegrating here um, let's see if new er yeah that pads good this one's toast unfortunately I don't know if I can peel off that pad and put a new one in there so I can keep this kind of uh, you know, dedicated uh, indexed pad but all right let's going back let's go back to this one right here this blue is really quite bright so um, it looks like a couple dabs in it right in with the London fog and salvia blue is still pretty bright so I'm going to just use this a little bit right now in the shadow areas and I'll go over it with another color I don't think I want it that you know, crystalline blue. I don't know, it might look okay. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Kind of hitting the shadows mostly. Okay, this is a good kind of a version of it. I've kind of already wiped off some of it, so um, it's applying lighter and yeah, slightly more muted. It starts off really bright though, so it is still fairly bright visually. Kind of hitting it in some of my rocks and the shadows. That it doesn't mean that you know the rocks are covered in water, uh, water or something like you know blue water. It's just that you know there's a lot of reflections of colors hitting off certain things. You can even bring some into your trees if you want to. Not that you want blue trees, but it's just. It just kind of makes things shimmer a little bit um, in terms of lighting. It's like light is hitting one object and it's being reflected up at other objects. And doing so like this, it gives um, the scene some visual continuity between some objects and other objects. All that means is if you put a little bit of color from one area into the other objects within the scene, it kind of creates this needle and thread type of effect and something for um, the different separate images to relate to. Okay, this is a fairly dark blue right here. It's the uh, uh, Prussian blue. You can use any kind of navy blue here, but the biggest thing, you know, to know is that we've gone through a range of values here, starting from a light blue to dark blue. If you're coloring something like brown tree trunks or something like that, I would start off with something like a tan, then go to a, you know, a lighter blue, medium blue, or whatever, and then work up into your dark blues for your darkest of areas. Okay, so work in a range of values. So see this right now, I'm kind of staying in the shadow areas a little bit more, I'm kind of not moving out too much or as much. Kind of developing my shadows right here. The brightest areas tend to be in the shadows. Brightest meaning the most intense, not the lightest. Okay, Lightest and brightest are two different things. Bright is, uh, you know, the intensity of a given um, hue when it comes to color and um, lightness is the relative um, you know light and dark of a color All right getting there I haven't stamped the scene in quite a long time or that other one I've done versions of it since um, a lot of people you know if they have a postcard of it or something like that at a, uh, at a show or whatever, a lot of times people wonder, how did you do that? Because I did it before I, uh, you know, the internet was out there and the video um, channels and whatnot. Okay, so I'm really developing those shadows again right in here. With my, this is black ink, by the way, now. 
I have to be careful now, the black, and I just re inked this, so it's really quite juicy, but see, it's kind of developing my rocks here a little bit more, shading some of them. And it's not shading unnecessarily just to make those objects darker, but it's, I like the attention that it, you know, you make this area darker and that seems lighter by contrast. So it makes my lights light or lighter by contrast, okay, by relation. Kind of developing my rocks a little bit, kind of at the bottom portion of the rock. If you color the bottom portion of the rock, the top portion, um, if it's left light, makes the image look a little bit more three-dimensional because you have different lighting um, on different parts of those objects. Not bad, we're getting a lot of mileage out of this one paper towel. It's even it's not even a full paper towel, it's like a partial. It's just like and then only one wadded up portion of it. I can probably get a little bit more detail with the uh, stylus tools though. Or you know, kind of a more exacting type of a tool. Um, markers, you know, you can get in here. Um, I'll use some markers in here too just so I can get in some of the real detailed areas um, a lot easier. So, media applicators and things like that, it doesn't have to be an either or type of thing. Do you use that or do you use that? Well, you know, it's just like painting a house, you know, if you're going to do the exteriors or gigantic walls, you might use a roller or you know, some sort of spraying type of thing, and but if you're doing like the trim around a window or something like that, then you'd use a smaller um, applicator usually for the more detailed work. And that's no different than stamping. You don't have to just use one or the other. Do you use a sponge with that or do you use a stylus tool or do you use a you know, paper towel, you know, in the scene? We well, use whatever is the most conducive for that object or area. Alright, kind of toning in my ledge here, giving it a little bit more um, substance, I guess, and kind of visual weight. Okay. And the shadows within here. It's getting really quite dark. <laughs> Maybe too dark. But I do have the pigment ink to use in here. See that? Doesn't that black really anchor that uh, rock down there in the corner? Getting there. See what that cloud texture does down there, though? Isn't that kind of a... It's kind of a nice whimsical element to add down there. I don't know if it's reflective of clouds in the sky or just kind of this billowy feel to, you know, these churning waters down there or what. But, I don't know. I like the look. Okay, so... Um, that little hazy tinge back there. I think that's all I'll do back there. I, I put a little bit of that gray in here in the background. I think that looks just fine as is. I might put some additional foreground in there. Some flo uh, flora. But I'm not sure yet. Okay, let's see here. 
I could put some extra textures in here too. Um, water pattern is a good one to use in here. I'm not sure yet though. There's ripples, um, all kinds of possibilities. Maybe maybe a little bit more texture. But that does look pretty good though with that still water though too. Hmm. Yeah, maybe not. I'll just leave it as is. I mean, you know, there'd be ripples coming out this way, but I don't know. It seems kind of magical that way, so I'll leave it as is. All right, let's take a look at some different imagery here. I pulled some of these bushes and things like that. I think that would look good up here, too, within the rocks. Maybe like so. It's maybe stamped in black. Alright, I need my acrylic blocks. My acrylic blocks are packed away. Okay. Here's my acrylic blocks here back from the show. I kept losing my um, little tops here, so someone put my. Uh, I had them, you know. <laughs> put some kind of markings on my, uh, my blocks, which I never get around to doing here. So thank you for doing that. And here's some pens that we're, we can use in this scene here. So um, this one's a manganese blue right there. I don't know if I need to do that, but um, some of these alcohol pens for sure we'll use in this scene, like this one right here. This is a aquamarine that'll look great in here in the shadows. Uh, maybe some greens and browns. Maybe the uh, Is this beige Very descriptive <laughs> this green right here let's try some of this let's see there's a pen uh, maybe for some mossy little touches on um, these rocks in here this one's a elm green I know you get the point here it's just kind of any kind of light Values of certain types of colors will look really great in here. Um, let's see how that goes. I should get my Versifying pen out too. Okay, so see, here's this green here. I think that might be a little bit too, you know, kind of warm green. But I'm trying to think about if I do this right here, maybe I should stamp out my die based ink imagery first rather than jump ahead. Uh, sometimes you can't stamp over, you know, dye, water based dye inks over the top of um, alcohol ink uh, applications very easily. So maybe I should get all this down first. Okay. Difficult masking techniques and joking. Just masking off some of these rocks right here. This will represent like some kind of bush at the base of the uh, the trees. It just kind of gives it some additional texture. Can you see that right in there? See, it doesn't make it that you know it pushes that tree back in the distance a little bit. It kind of merges with it too, visually. But it just adds that extra layer of something. I mean, I could put this amongst these rocks too. I could just mask off some of the rock. I don't have to mask off all of the waterfall. You mask off some of the rocks um, and place these types of imagery within the rocks, okay? So you can see it's growing out of the cracks of some of these rocks or whatnot. See that right there? See how it those crisp impressions play against that area back there as well. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be one thing or another, too. You can have multiple types of, uh, you know, flora uh, kind of within a given space, you know, just to play textures over, you know, against one another. And maybe I'll throw one in here, too. Let's go with. Uh, Something like this, maybe, just to give it a little continuity between um, 
background texture and foreground. Go like that. Let's go for another one right in that area. I like so. Alright. It's a little sharp and prickly, but we'll put some other things in there as well. Okay. Oh, <laughs> there's my top right there. See, it came in handy in finding my plastic thing. That's tack and peel on these uh, blocks, by the way, for that temporary uh, mounting of your stamps. Okay, here's some leaves. Let's do with this in the foreground right here. I love this leaf stamp. Let's use this and how about, let's go with three colors. Let's go with them. Um, black, okay. Have a little bit of brown. This is, now this is a really dry brown. Let's not use this brown right here. Let's go back to that olive brown again and add some of that into it. Right over some of these leaves here and there. Okay, I want to keep this, you know, this impression fairly dark because I'm going to be stamping it kind of over some of these trees and whatnot. Let's try our first one right in here. Let's make this um, scene really plush with uh, imagery. Plush, but not busy. We'll show you how to kind of knock down the, uh, the busyness of it kind of later on. Okay, see that right in there? See how it plays against those soft billowing clouds in that uh, water area? All right, now let's go for a multiple impression type of area with this. So I colored that with some greens and, and it, or that olive brown and black. So let's go, let's go with just straight black now, right in here, okay? If you really want to go for some depth, then maybe you can emboss, you know, another impression of that black, what I'm doing right now, but emboss it. Can you imagine that kind of? coming out of the foreground and being dimensional, it would really, really, you know, it'd be really cool to have kind of this embossed version of it. But I won't do that here. Okay, now this area over here is darker than this area was. You know, this area had a little bit of white back there, so I think I'm going to put this another uh, tree impression, but let's just do this one in black. So they, you know, your treatment of imagery from one side to the other doesn't have to be um, the same. It could be a little bit different or a lot different. You know, maybe one side gets completely dark and you want to go with a, a lighter version of it, like in a snowy type of uh, scene. Sometimes I'll stamp imagery in white ink over darker ink. You know, just because, you know, the darker one won't even show up. Let's go for a couple impressions of that, actually. The leaves kind of come in here like that. See, it's kind of framing off the scene a little bit more. Okay, continue on. Let's see if I put some of it up there. Let's go for a little bit of this olive uh, brown. I keep wanting to say olive green. I don't know this pen real well. I just was on my desk. I must have bought them years ago, though. Okay, just using a small portion of this as a kind of an overhang. See that right there? Doesn't that look really dimensional? So we're benefiting from those lighter versions, you know, the second impressions, third impressions, wiping off of the uh, the imagery. 
so that when we stamp other imagery over the top of them that are darker, it really pushes depth. So that was a really easy thing to do. You just blot it off, you know, objects that are going to be more distant. Okay, this one's just in straight black right here. Now I have this pretty solid tree trunk right here, so... This is something that I was talking to someone about this weekend. Um, kind of always position your scene in a position that's going to be the most conducive for your application of media or your stamping of imagery, okay? You don't always have to have this straight up. Sometimes if I'm going like this, I can't see underneath there from my angle. But if I go like this, I can see this easier, you know, you know, where I'm positioning things, okay? All right, some of you use positioners and whatnot, you know, so things might not always be upright, but, you know, you can change your positioner around, too. Okay, how about one more right over here? I'll have it hanging down a little bit more, so I'm changing the, uh, the amount of usage from that. Isn't that fun though, that top kind of hanging canopy of trees, uh, limbs and leaves. Look how dimensional that is. So it's coming up from below and up top, you know, if you want to. in here. This would look really quite dramatic in here, this writer. It would change the scale of things though too, if I put her in there. I'm not sure if I want to or not yet. Still deciding. Okay. Um, I have these other trees in here. Yeah, why not? I'm going, I don't know fairly dense. I really wanted to, you know, with all the craziness going on and and the, uh, whatever, the world, this COVID thing. I don't know. I just feel like really stamping it, trying to stamp out something really, I don't know, beautiful or whatever. And, uh, not worried about, you know, the amount of imagery I want to use in here. It's not a ton of imagery. This is a pretty big scene, too, so. All right, this is Leafless Pines, the medium one. Put this somewhere in the foreground like that. So, uh, just kind of adding in to the depth of the piece. That looks kind of strange, though, doesn't it, with the only uh, image of it in here. So let's go for a Maybe a couple of them like this. I'll change the height. Like so. Something like that. And I'll put one in the background too. I have the smaller version. This could go here too. In the foreground. No, actually, yeah. I might put that uh, writer in there in a different area. Here's a smaller version of this. But let's do this right here. Let's ink it up. And let's do that same type of thing we did with the background imagery, because this one will be in the background. Let's blot it off a pretty good amount right here, and mask off, and uh, let's put it right back in here somewhere. Hopefully it stamps out dark enough where it shows up, and still looks like it's in front of that other background tree. Yeah, like something like that. It's kind of not very visible. I hit it right on the edge of that tree, but um, it still creates a little bit of a repetition of form. Let's go for a little back up there too, okay? I just need a little tip of it. Stamp inked up, blot it off, masked, and let's go for it right in here. 
So I put them right, right back in there. So we get this kind of little area right there, kind of relating to this foreground area right there. I don't know. It would have to hit people on a kind of a subconscious level because it's pretty hidden. But does it do that? I don't know. I guess if someone looked at it long enough, they might see those types of things. Okay, so we have a lot of stuff working in here. It's, it's a pretty busy scene, but let's go in here now and I'll show you what really is going to add to the fun of this piece. And I'll do that with some pigment ink. I need to go into my demo supplies again and grab that. But I'm really looking forward to this next step because it's some of the things that I really like doing in a piece, which is adding additional texture and lighting. Okay, tools, common cotton ball, some Q-tips, and we have our white pigment ink here, right here, okay? Go with like a, I don't know, just about any type of white pigment ink, except for, um, vr, not versifying, but um, brilliance. It dries too fast, okay? Which I, I love brilliance, but just not for this purpose right here. All right, this is really weird. I'm not sure why I have that cotton candy coloring on here coming back from the show this past week and maybe I was spraying something and splattered over on this but anyways getting this inked up right here I'm not sure how much ink is ever on my pads after I get back from a show because I use them like for hours you know on some of those days um, not continuously but okay yeah, there's a pretty decent amount on this but Usually I like to blot this off, kind of when I get it going, it kind of starts to flatten the, uh, you know, the surface a little bit. Kind of spreads out the ink a little bit more evenly doing that, okay? All right, so, churning water. Let's take this, now it already does look fairly airy to me, right? We've wiped off some certain areas and whatnot, we left areas kind of light, but where light meets dark, okay? That's the area, area or areas that I find the most effective with this type of tool. Okay. Okay, gosh. I'm forgetting about some certain steps right here. But let me just do this really fast. This is a really quick step right here. All right. Let's go in and this is just your very, very light alcohol ink right here. Let's go and add a little bit of a tone to some of these trees. You can go in and color in some of your trees a little bit more if you want to kind of flesh them out a touch, okay? Where your blues have a little bit of green. Maybe it reads as kind of moss on the rocks and whatnot. So those little details like that little rock right there. You can go in and flesh it out a little bit more. You can add some tone in your water. These are dye-based ink impressions, so I don't need to worry about alcohol ink smearing them, unless the ink is still wet, and then I'll kind of drag it, but for the most part, you know, your alcohol inks dry pretty fast. This is on glossy cardstock. It'll dry even faster on matte cardstock. So this down here, and this green down here. It's subtle, okay? And I like, that's the way I like to do it. I like to go with, you know, some fairly light values of um, my tones because I can always go darker with them if I want to. But I like to build it up through very subtle transitions, okay? That way I don't get some kind of big marks suddenly that kind of I wasn't expecting because I'm going with such light ones to begin with. It really doesn't matter. Almost. You know, so it gives you time to kind of build up those colors, you know, like that. And I'm getting a little bit black on here, so it's dragging up. I'm dragging some of these areas that are still a little bit, some of those impressions are just still a little bit wet. But seeing this, I can put some of this in my water so I can get some hint of some of that blue without coloring them all in, too. Okay, this is kind of like a, an olive elm green. It's kind of like that olive brown a little bit. Yeah, this one's too green. It's much too bright. See that right there? So what I do is I just let's take that and 
with a lighter version of it. Okay. And just kind of spread that out a little bit. On the glossy paper, it kind of spreads out nicely. It's like a, taking a, a blender pen and blending it out. Okay. I just take, you know, the lighter version of something of a given hue. I'll use that for my blending purpose. Anyway, so you can see right here, it's getting a little bit richer. Uh, let's take some of that green. I like that green in there. And it just kind of makes your areas seem a little bit more deep and kind of developed in terms of the, the forms in here. Okay. Now, let's go back to that cotton ball. Can't even tell which side has the ink on it. I think it was like that. Let's see here. All right, and that's kind of the consistency you want. You don't want a big blob of it, okay? All right, rewinding here. It's really effective where light meets dark, okay? So I start in my lighter areas like this, and I kind of work it out into my darker areas slowly, okay? See, like this right here, it's you barely see anything when I just do it a couple taps like that, but the more I tap into an area, the more of this ink applies to the surface like that, so um, it'll just get lighter and lighter. <laughs> this one might have dried too much in here. I still need, I might need to go over it, uh, take more ink in there, but let's build it up from kind of a, this really light kind of frosting or whatever. It's haze. Not hazing. It's something else. <laughs> but uh, let's grab some more ink here. Okay. Where light meets dark. Let's put it down here in some of these clouds where I've just kind of retained the lightness of it. Kind of makes them look a little bit more illuminated and kind of glowing with light some around right at the base of the waterfall where the water's really churning a lot more. It's a kind of glowing type of look that's starting to develop here because you have the translucent white in there. Okay. You have this area in back here that I can apply some. Put some on the water surface, like that. So you can kind of have this creeping, it. oh, sorry, sorry. You can have some of this creeping out into these shadows like that. See that right there? So that area that I really made dark, like that, where it's almost too dark, you can kind of have some of this mist in that area. So it, it kind of, it lifts it a little bit more. Okay, let's go over to this side of that falling water right in there. Can you see that rock right there? Watch what this does on that rock. That dark rock. I'm not doing it because, oh, I took that rock and made it too light, but look how that illuminates that area. So it just kind of, if they play against each other and enhance each other. It's not trying to bury something, you know, in some opaque application of this ink. It's just kind of, I don't know, Kind of animating it a little bit more. It's it's bringing it to uh, it's bringing it to life. It's making it look more round and full um, in some instances. It's making it look more multi-dimensional. You know, it looks a little bit more three-dimensional that way. You know, when you add shadows and lighting to something. All right, so see that right there? See, doesn't it look kind of misty and frosty and a little bit more magical in that space? Let's take a zoom out like that. Let's add a little bit in here. It almost doesn't need to be done right back here in the distance, but let's add some of this down here. and Let's see if we can't enhance some of this down here. See these overhanging um, leaves? Maybe those are being illuminated a little bit in some light. See that right there? So this is why we leave, you know, some of those areas of light, you know, within our scene. If everything got really dark everywhere, 
this kind of stands out and it doesn't look kind of realistic. Um, but when you leave some light of the paper that we're using, adding in these kind of white highlights like that, see, look at that light streaming through that. I put a little bit over that tree. Let's do it right in here. A little bit, okay. Maybe it's getting darker over here. It's not as light as over here. Let's just add a little bit in here and see how it looks. And if you like it, and you want to add more, then add more. Kind of I'm adding a little bit in there, kind of like this fog's kind of stringing through in the background. Does it look like everything's kind of glowing now with, you know, backlighting? down here in the waterfall. Now when this pigment ink dries, it dries darker, so I apply a little bit more than, or try to, than what I think looks good. <laughs> I mean, you can let it dry too, and if, you know, you've lost some of the, uh, the brilliance of it, you know, the uh, illumination, you can always go back and add another layer and just continue to build it up to the point that you want. Okay. This right here, I'm putting this on this cloud down here, but I'm putting it over some of this tree right there, but that tree is now kind of, part of it is uh, subdued a little bit, and I think that looks good. It, it varies the impression a little bit. It kind of puts air into the space as well, and see these little prickly branches right in here um, that I like to add depth. You know, some of them are a little bit more varied now. See, this one right here has some of that pigment ink off it. This one's more just straight. Right over here, and so on and so forth. I mean, this is really fun stuff to do, and watch things kind of, I don't know, come alive, or the whole scene kind of, uh, eh, it takes on a little bit of a different spirit. I'm using the Hero Arts pigment ink here, but you know, like I said, it doesn't, you know, it's not brand specific. I kind of like that foggy haze down here, so I think I'm going to stretch it across this whole area a little bit more. Yeah, let's go with something like that. All right. Oh dear, and there would be interesting. This figure I'm still thinking about, though. This figure kind of riding into the scene, kind of taking a look over the, uh, the setting, enjoying it, you know, on our daily ride. Who knows? Maybe I'll add that in there. God, I, oh, I still have to add in my bleed proof white, though. Okay. And if I add her in right now, okay, let me just do this right now. I was a little worried. I like to take care of all of my stamping before I add this in here, but I don't want this to be splattered over the figure, whatever I use down there. So let's go with the splatter painting technique first here. Okay, so this is uh, Dr. Martin's, P Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Can I get it to the right consistency? You want kind of like thick syrup or something like that. So you have to add water to it periodically or every time you use it. Depends on how, many, how much you uh, use it, how often you use it. Looks like I don't need to add any water to it. It has the right consistency. I use this for stars and textures and things like that in my skies, but where you have things like 
churning water. It's really a fun um, technique to use to represent splashing uh, water. Okay, let's see here. I need to... Eh, I was wondering if I needed to readjust my uh, exposure here. It looks pretty true to it. At least the back of my uh, camera, the screen. Okay, so this is what we're going for right here. We're going for this little splattery type of technique right here. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to kind of target one little specific area because you can see that this spray pattern, right? But I'll try to get it right at the base of some of these waterfalls, okay? And it's just kind of like, you know, it's not taking the whole, all the hairs of the, uh, the brush. It's just kind of letting go, you know, a couple at a time. And it kind of creates that splatter. I like that. See that texture down there? Let's do it over here now. <laughs> Some of the splatter in there, it's going all over the place today for me. You can also just do, you know, some white gel pen work in there and, you know, kind of draw in, you know, some additional splashes, but this kind of gives you a nice varied. <laughs> I don't doing this like that's going over there. My the shape of my brush has changed uh, since I packed it away and went out this weekend, this past weekend. Uh, I think that looks okay though. It kind of gives it a little bit of motion and whatnot. Mm, just you know, just in general, some texture too. Okay. Uh, why not? I'm going to use this writer in here. That Dr. P.H. Martin's Blue Proof White really dries fast, too. So, I mean, if you have some, you know, some little splashes of that you don't you you don't like, you can just take a paper towel and kind of buff them off, or you can take this is a little scraper tool and just scratch it off. Uh, it's still a little wet there. I'm going to wipe some of it off where that uh, figure is going to be because that paint does stick. It goes right on the surface of the uh, card and it, it creates a little bit of a little mound <laughs> of paint because it doesn't absorb at all. So you can just wipe it off. Okay, I'm going to do this one in Versify. Let's make this one... Yeah, I... Everything looks really black. I, I guess maybe it's because I re-inked this. So. Let me just go with the dye-based ink. I think if I go with the Versafine and it's the only Versafine image used in here, I think it might stand out too much. I want it to be you know, a little bit more incorporated in with the scene. Okay, so let's see here. I want a nice silhouette of her against this background, so I'm going to put her right in that area right here. I'm kind of pressing this down a little bit longer because I don't know if I got all those little dots down there, so I'm just making sure I have the pressure coming from every direction. Okay. Yeah, great. That's the way she looks. It certainly created a strong focal point, don't you think? You know, I mean, the focal point was probably something else before, but it definitely falls in to the figure now. Anytime you put um, a figure a bird, any living creature, especially if it's a person, um, it tends to be the thing that's, you know, leads, you know, it grabs our um, eye and then it leads us into the scene like that. 
And it kind of gives us scale. I mean, in this case, it kind of gives us an idea how large those um, waterfalls might be, you know, in relation to the figure. If I had a really small version of her, okay, there, she comes in two different sizes. Um, by relation, it, it would say that the waterfalls are larger, okay? So you can play around with um, scale that way by not doing anything, but just by stamping a figure in there, okay? If I stamp that figure right in the back here, by relation, it would make the, you know, those waterfalls much, much smaller in relation to the figure, okay? Anyway, okay, so here's a white gel pen. I might go over some of these little waterfalls and put a little detail into it if I want to. You can do little dots, like at the base of the waterfall a little bit more and concentrate it where kind of it's hard to direct it with the, uh, you know, the splatter painting that gets a little bit more random, but. Oh, for things like the, uh, the rocks down here, the rocks down here, boulders with lichen, if you know what that is. It's um, kind of this um, growth on the rocks or whatever lichen grows on. And, um, you can add some of those little types of touches in here. Here's a green gel pen. I don't know if I've ever used it before. You can kind of go in those textures and add a little bit of that green in here. It's subtle, but definitely visible. Kind of adds a little bit of that texture in there. Here's some of these background rocks as well. Put some of that texture on them. I'll hold this up. I mean, even to me, having this right here, it's very, very subtle. You can put it on your tree trunks as well, but let me see if you can see some of it. See, like a little greenish. There's a, I don't know if you can see those dots, but there's just this tinge of it right in here. But it makes things a little bit more, I don't know, textured and kind of interesting sometimes doing those types of things. But all kinds of stuff you could do. Glitter pen types of effects. Um, I don't even know if it's still working. Let's see here. No. <laughs> I have this glitter. Oh, look at this right here. That entire glitter is solid within here. Anyways, I'm getting off the subject, but I don't know. I have some different kind of Wink of Stella pens. I haven't used them in a while, so I'd rather to shake these up and whatnot. But I don't know. If you want to add in... Yeah, it's still perfect here. <laughs> if you want to add in little glistening little touches within your water and whatnot. You can do that. These little touches, this is a wink of still, it's like a, I don't know, is it a glitter pen? I, I, I guess. It's real fine glitter though. But let's see if we can capture some of that. But you put little touches like that, little silver touches or glitter like that, kind of glistening in your scene and it adds that, those nice little touches for the recipients of your card, you know to reward them for kind of closer inspection and whatnot. Okay, but I think I'll end there. I think that was uh, served its purpose. I really felt like stamping something today. A little bit more in depth. I'm not worried about time or whatever. Um, or concepts or anything like that. I just wanted to come up with something kind of interesting. Uh, search for beauty and nature and whatnot. Waterfalls tend to be kind of a, you know, moving water tends to take on, you know, a nice kind of relaxing um, type of uh, scenario in terms of the audio of it. In this case, it's the visual audio of it, but we want to convey movement through the use of um, value, keeping the waterfalls and the path of the water light like that. It kind of can draw the eye up there in the distance like that. And we have this kind of entryway into our scene and your viewers can kind of follow along with the, uh, the lighter pathway like that. So it's this kind of illuminated pathway or whatnot. I mean, you can, make, you can do this in different ways, but um, um, that's just one way to do it. 
um, we have these areas in the background um, with a simple technique of pre, you know, blotting it off first and then going for the second impressions to convey depth within the piece. And uh, let's see, what else did we do in here? You know, just the toning of our different imagery in here, the bottom portions of it kind of being darker than the top portion. So when you move into your darker tones, you kind of use them on the base of things and the base of rocks in this case to convey um, um, the mass of a certain object and the opacity of it and that it's casting a shadow. Same thing with the trees in there, you know, just going in and uh, blotting off the size of the trees that are facing kind of the dominant area of light within a scene. And then that all pays off when you put in things like foreground like that, because the foreground really stands out against the background when the background imagery is lighter in value. Okay, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed the scene. Thanks so much for uh, hanging in there if you watch this whole thing. And uh, I don't know, I hope you choose to uh, try to do it. It's a fun little scene to do, even if you don't have these exact images like that with your waterfalls kind of leave the base of them kind of light and then with your you know your white pigment ink going in there and kind of building out those tones and textures using that um, type of technique in there and it's a really fun one to do to watch kind of light go back into dark I think I don't know I think it tends to use a different hemisphere of the brain or something like that it's a really relaxing process to do those reverse types of marks Okay, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. Thanks again for tuning into the channel. And happy stamping to all of you, if you find yourself with a little bit of extra time around this crazy time of the uh, COVID or coronavirus or whatever we're calling it presently.